everybody. Let's go ahead and stand as we begin to worship together today. here in this place. We want to continue to lift him up. Let's keep those hands going, okay? Here we go.
God's presence today. We want to continue on in, in our worship in a, a way that we get to celebrate today. And we're going to be doing communion today. So if you guys, if you didn't get the elements on the way in, just go ahead and raise your hand. If we could bring the lights up a little bit just so we can see and the ushers can get you that. But this is a special time where we just remember the words of Jesus, the price that he paid. He went into this willingly, knowingly. Doesn't mean that it's something he really wanted to do, but he was willing to obey. He's willing to step into that. So we just want to bring up the words of Jesus. It says, when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I've eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I will tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And then he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. That's what we want to do today. We want to do this in remembrance of Jesus and the price that he paid. We're going to be singing a song called Yes and Amen. As we're going through this song, we want to invite you. You don't have to be a part of this church. You don't even have to be a Nazarene. We just ask that you're part of the family of God, that you're following Jesus. And I want you guys to reflect on the things that Jesus done in your life. The price that he paid. The things that he's going to do. And then when you're ready, take that, those elements, and remember Jesus. Remember what he did and the price that he paid as we worship together today.
thank you that you stand before us and that we can stand before you that you walk with us each and every step of the way that we just dedicate this time to you God that you would work in and through us as we give you praise today sing it out together.
His face shine upon you and be gracious to you.
just sing that again quietly, okay? over you guys right now. can sing that he is for us. God, that you're for us. You're not going to leave us. You're not going to forsake us. Like we sing before, we can stand on your promises, God. We just ask for your presence in a new way today. That you would do a work in our hearts, a work in our families our work, in our communities, anywhere that we go, that we would take you with us each and every step of the way. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, we all said, amen. All right. <laughs> go ahead and take your seats. It's good to say yes to the Lord. His blessings are just so, so good. We just say yes to him always. All right, mm, so I've got, a, I've got things that I have to say to you guys now this morning. Um, hello, welcome to church. My name is Roberta and I am blessed to be on staff here at the NAS and I am blessed to get to welcome you to church. For those of you, maybe this is your first time here in the worship center with us, welcome. Maybe for some of you online, it's your first time joining us online. Hello. Online worshipers, click the I'm new here link that'll pop up on your screen any moment. And for those of you here in the worship center with us, you should have received a connection card on your way in. If you did not, please raise your hand and one of our ushers will make sure that you get one because this is a very important piece of paper. For those of you who are new here with us, what I want you to do is fill that out. Take a moment to fill it out and I want you to hold on to it and visit us out at Guest Central After Services. And you'll also notice on the back side of this card is an opportunity for you to write your prayer requests or you can jot down your praise reports that you have as well. And as you're sharing your prayer request with us, I don't want you to think that it's you're gonna fill it out and it's just like gonna go out into the unknown. That's not the case. We do see it as an honor and a privilege to be able to pray over your prayer requests. So take a minute to fill that out as well. And again, if you're new here, stop by Guest Central 
after service, we can't wait to meet you out in the lobby. And right now, I would like us to continue in the spirit of our worship as we think about why we give back to God as we move into giving. You know, it's February now, which means Valentine's Day is coming up, guys. And also we are moving into our new message series, Love Listens This Morning. And also we believe, or we give up things that we love for people that we love more. So it's all about love right now. And as we give, I want us to give with a loving heart. You know, the song we just sang, I think about my children and their children and even their children because of our generosity and our giving, because of our faithfulness and love for the Lord, my children's children and their children will come to know the love of Jesus Christ because of what we're doing right now. Great things happen when we give back, when we give back to God. Ministry can happen, whether it's through outreach, through missions work, any ministry that happens in our building, in this space, but it's beyond that thinking about future generations that can be impacted and their lives that can be transformed because we gave selflessly back to God because we love God that much that we know others will come to know his love and the love of Jesus and have a relationship with him. Would you please bow your heads with me so we can pray for our tithe. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for showing up in this place. Thank you for loving us even when we feel unlovable. Lord, and right now we come to you specifically and I pray that you would bless these gifts that we are about to receive. I pray that you would bless the giver, Lord, and that you would use it to grow your kingdom, to reach our lost brothers and our lost sisters, Lord, so that they can see the love that you have for them because that's what it's really all about. And so we give this back to you, Lord. We love you and we thank you so much. Amen. All right, as our ushers are passing the offering containers, I have just a couple of quick announcements for you. First up, we have Forward. Forward kicked off again this morning. It happens at 1030, the first three Sundays of every month. Forward is a great opportunity for you to get to know the church, meet some staff, and figure out what your next step is. So I encourage you to check out Forward. No matter where you are on your faith journey, Maybe you've been here for a while now or you're new here, check out Forward. And then something else you might've seen in the lobby this morning is we are voting for church advisory board members. So if you are an owner at the NAS, we welcome you to cast your vote for who will serve this next year on our church advisory board. So you can meet the candidates at the link on the screen behind me, or you can pick up a paper copy out in the lobby. And I ask that you just take a minute to Check out these candidates and pray. Pray for them, pray for our church board. Um, they really support, encourage, guide, and pray over our church, our school, our childcare, and our staff and our leadership here at the church. So make sure you check out that. Voting will be happening today after service and again next weekend, next Sunday as well. And then lastly, we have baby and child dedication coming up next weekend. If you are a parent and you're ready to take another step for your family, for your kiddo, and you wanna have them dedicated to the Lord, we have an opportunity for baby and child dedication next Sunday. You can just visit the link on the screen to learn information and sign up for that. There is a mandatory parent class this week, so just wanna point that out. All right, everyone, that's all I have for you. Let's go ahead and prepare our hearts to hear the word of the Lord. People are hurting, but they don't have language for it. There's a gigantic void of where do I belong? They're desperate out there. They're looking for answers. And the Bible keeps telling me that the church is the light. Our next move is to actually take background that the enemy has taken from us as the church and as God's people. There is an army, a resurrected army, being raised up, just a remnant of what was before. This is our moment to take back and even to declare in a bigger, broader way that the kingdom of God is advancing. 
How does the gospel speak to people in this city? Are you willing to be reignited by those who've come after you? Are we willing to pay the price of relationship? Are you willing to risk it all? and thank you so much for joining us, whether here in person or online. We are so glad that you've chosen to worship with us today. And I wanna let you know up front, um, Pastor Dale is absent. Uh, he is in London studying and training with our Alpha program. I uh, took Pastor David and another half dozen of our missionaries from our church to join up with those that are already there and over a dozen of our church uh, men are in Puerto Rico serving, and Pastor Carlos, I just got a photo, is preaching down there in Puerto Rico uh, in uh, bilingual translations in both Spanish and English, and so this is what you're stuck with today. My name is John, and I'm uh, one of the pastors at the bottom of the totem pole, but let me tell you, I'm so glad to be here today, and it is a privilege to kick off our new series Love listens. And so throughout this series, you're going to see that we are going to have different members of our preaching team invite leaders uh, from our church and from our community up here on stage and engage in some conversations about what it means to listen to others and to love through that process. And in this way, we are going to start today uh, with this uh, topic of love listening in the church. And so as we started divvying up uh, who was going to have what sections, I found I was going to have love listens in the church. And I thought there is no one that hears more about what's happening in the church through the mouths of our children and grandchildren than our very own Pastor Brittany Pickering. So I'm going to invite her up to the stage to join me today. Will you give her a hand? Pastor, thank you so much for being with us. This is awesome. We're excited to learn from you today, Pastor Brittany. And, you know, uh, you're used to speaking to 100 plus people every single week in our children's area. Um, maybe you need us to get in circles or something to listen to your story today. <laughs> oh, no, Pastor John. But if you're well behaved today, you'll get a sucker before your mom picks you up. Oh, let's go. So. All right. All right, well, as Pastor John mentioned, um, we are gonna be taking a look at love, and one of um, the aspects of love we're gonna be talking about is spiritual gifts, and so I'm gonna jump into 1 Corinthians chapter 12 this morning. Should be coming up on the screen behind me here, or you could follow along with me. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses seven through 11, it says, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same spirit gives great faith to another, and to someone else, the one spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles, and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the spirit of God or from another spirit. Still, another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. And so as I read that this morning, I'm sure many of you guys are probably wondering, what is it that the Lord has empowered me to do? And that's actually a question that the early church had asked. They had, they had struggled with this a bit and they were wondering, what was it that the Lord had empowered them to do through the Holy Spirit? And if that's you, if you're in here this morning and you don't know what that is, meet me down at Naz Kids. We'll get you signed up to serve sometime and we'll figure it out real quick what your spiritual gifts are. Um, but in all seriousness, you know, the Lord empowers us. God gives us these gifts. And, and, and we don't get all of the gifts. We do get a certain number of the, the different gifts, but we don't get all of them. And we should not expect to get all of them. It's not as if um, these gifts are some sort of superpowers. No, no. But God does give us any certain number of gifts to um, accomplish 
his specific purposes in this fallen world and in our specific circumstances as well. Now, I just read to you this passage, um, verses seven through 11. I actually have an addendum to add to that as I get to spend a lot of time with your kiddos. So the addendum is gonna come on the screen here behind me, but I would like to add, and to children, there is given through the spirit an uncanny ability to hear adult conversations regardless of distance or decibel level. That is how softly you think you are speaking. See, your kids, they've been given the gift of listening and they've been soaking in all this information. You know, um, I hear a lot of funny stories down in Children's Church and um, I have a couple of them to share with you this morning. So I'll jump into our first one. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was uh, snowing outside. It was starting to get kind of icy and so I told the kiddos, hey, before you leave, I want you to get your coats on, you know, make sure your shoes are tied. It's getting kind of icy outside and so you're gonna wanna be careful. And one little boy said, my mom tells me that my dad loves to skate on thin ice. So, okay, thank you for that. Um, and then another time down in Children's Church, I asked the kiddos if they had any prayer requests. So we circle up, we get into you know, a prayer circle and I ask the kiddos, what can, how can I pray for you today? You know, what prayer requests do you have for me today? And one little girl said, can you please pray for my grandma because she fell and broke her hip. And I thought, oh, that's terrible. What's your grandma's name? And so I circle all the kids around. Guys, we gotta pray for so-and-so's grandma. And the little girl, clear as can be, but she's milking it. <laughs> I said, she's, she's doing what though? And then she's like, well, that's what my mom said. My mom said she's milking it. <laughs> Thank you very much. And then another time, um, I had told the kiddos, hey, we're going to um, kids camp again this summer, so make sure, you know, if you wanna go, have your parents fill out the form, you know, they'll pay online. And one little boy said, I don't know if I can make it this year because my mom said we're on a budget because my dad golfs too much. <laughs> and then the little boy goes on to say, but we all know my mom spends all of our money at Target. Uh, amen. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And the last one, this one's a little risky to tell, um, a little girl came in um, with $5 for the offering bucket. And so we have an offering bucket out in Children's Church and a little girl had came in, she had five bucks. And I said, wow, you have five whole dollars for the offering bucket? That's awesome. You are giving your money to God, you know? And she said, yeah, and I earned this. So I thought, oh, she must have cleaned her room. She must have unloaded the dishwasher, right? Oh, no, no, she tells me, yeah, I earned this because when our parents have alone time and we leave them alone, we get paid. <laughs> Thank you very much. And Pastor John, I think I see some parents slipping down into their seats here a little bit. Some parents are like, oh no, but hey, I didn't name any names. I didn't name any names. So, um, so but you know, this, these stories, they're funny and, and these kids keep me laughing. I learned so much about your families. Um, <laughs> And so, you know, you may be thinking this is a negative thing. It's actually not. This is not a negative thing. You see, your kiddos are soaking in information. They're learning. They're, you know, they're, they're auditorily gifted. Truly, that is, that is the spiritual gift that they have at the moment. You know, they're able to listen and to um, receive information and to soak in this information. And I did have one more, actually. It just came to mind. Um, this one last one. So Pastor John, John's son, Garen, his youngest son, is in Children's Church. And he shared with me a story okay. about... Hey, hold up here, Pastor Brittany. Uh, oh, we're out of five. I said I house, wasn't going right? to name any names, but here we are. <laughs> Thank you for that. But that is very true. Pastor, I appreciate what you shared there uh, as we look at the importance of spiritual gifts and how not every person can possess all of them, but that all of us together can experience them and have them as well. And the importance of how our kids are listening and the importance for us to listen to our kids and you hear so much from our children because you're attentive to who they are and you prioritize them. And our church is better because of your presence here and the ways that you serve. So thank well, you for thank that. You. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Give her a hand, right? Thank oh. you. Thank you. Now, I, I, I can reflect on this personally and it hit me this past week while I was leading our first group of men down on the mission trip to Puerto Rico. I felt my calling uh, to ministry at a young age, fourth grade, an, an age and grade that is under your ministry. Oh, yeah. So at that young of an age, I felt a call to be a missionary. And I was very open with that. I expressed that uh, all growing up. I want to be a missionary. And um, I shared that with many teachers and pastors and people in the church. And I'm grateful that they didn't just dismiss 
dismiss that. They didn't just dismiss that in my life and say, well, that's awesome, keep reading the Bible, or okay, you know, keep coming. They were encouraging that way. In fact, I had a sixth grade teacher at the Christian school here that as I was expressing my call to be a missionary, she said, you know, John, sometimes on the mission field, you need to have extra uh, expertise or ways to serve. And uh, she said, for example, sometimes people go into the medical field. And so maybe you could look into becoming a doctor or, or uh, a dentist. And I thought, well, she's seen my grades. Like, I don't know why <laughs> she's saying that to me. But she encouraged me. In, in, in my own uh, youthfulness, I would say, I expressed her, I just want to talk about Jesus. Uh, no, that's not for me. Maybe I'll marry somebody in the medical field, and sure enough, I did. And I said, but I'll have people in the medical field with me on all of my trips, but I just want to be there to talk about Jesus. And it hit me this week when we went down on this construction trip, and the one gentleman that was with us who is uh, an EMS and certified, he's there to help provide care for any injuries or, or things that may take place, was the husband of my sixth grade teacher all those years ago. And isn't that cool how God orchestrates things together? And Dave Baumgartner being there uh, as our medical support for this missions and how she encouraged that so many years ago because she listened to me in love. And it reminds me of what you shared here in 1 Corinthians. If you back up even to chapter 11, verse 1, it says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. And that's exactly what we're trying to spur each other on to do within the church is say, hey, follow this example. As I follow Christ, I want you to be able to have a path that you follow also. And so Thinking of our guys in Puerto Rico, I took a picture of them here on my last night there. Uh, we went to Old San Juan to, to have a dinner before I left, and uh, I want to share a little bit and brag on how God has used these guys. We showed up in Puerto Rico um, with guys that had just had a makeshift welding class the Wednesday before we flew out, and in just four days... Uh, with these six guys, they made themselves available through the giftings that the Lord has given them, and they completed and finished a roof on a church that had been absent for five and a half years wow. since that hurricane. So praise the Lord for the ways that he's working and the giftings, and then the fact they made themselves available through that. And, that, and that's awesome because it's a testament to what happens when we use our gifts to help edify each other. God gives us the gifts, and you listed them there in the passage you read, and he gives us gifts, not that we hold on to them, but that they are then given back to the body, to the body of Christ. None of us can have all of the gifts, but we all have a gift to play. And then when you don't stay connected to church, when you're not connected to the church family, you're missing out on specific gifts that God has intended for you to experience. There's things that are gonna happen in your life where you need an encouragement, you need support, you need the church family to rally around you, and you know that in separation, in absence, you're disconnected from what God has put and orchestrated to equip you for those moments. And so as I think of you know, our, our time in Puerto Rico, it hit me that these men are going down, sharing their gifts to an extension of the church they never knew had existed, they'd never been a part of before, but we got to experience this past Sunday a church service where the pastor said, let's take a moment at the start of his message and let's celebrate what God has done. Thanks to the faithfulness of our brothers from Grove City, Nazarene, coming down here and serving, we're getting to have church inside for the first time in five and a half years. Wow. Five and a half years, they've waited and prayerfully anticipated God to show up and move. They didn't know what it was gonna look like. They've been worshiping under a huge tree that was full of termites, and literally they have stories of iguanas falling on top of worshipers. Oh. That's crazy. That's, that, that is the part of the zoo I don't want to experience, right? <laughs> But that is their reality. But man, God has more resources within our church and he has gifted the church 
to be the resource and the hope for the world. And so all of these gifts are nothing, though, without love. Yeah, you know, Pastor John, you're exactly right. And so if these wonderful and powerful gifts that the Holy Spirit gifts to us is nothing without love, then that brings us to, you know, what is love? And so Paul explains what love is, and that leads us to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. It should come up on the screen here. It says, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. See, the church in Corinth, they began arguing over these spiritual gifts. They began wrestling with which one is the best gift, which one is the most important gift. And so Paul writes to them and says, the best, the most important is love. See, without love, all of these gifts that God gives to us is, you know, they're, they're essentially meaningless. And so these stories that I shared with you this morning about, um, you know, some funnies that we hear in children's church and how the kiddos are soaking those in, this message is actually very personal to me as well. Um, my husband and I are expecting our first baby. Yes, thank you. We're a little nervous, especially after the stories I've heard in there, because I know that one day there's going to be a children's pastor that's going to hear. My mom tells my dad he needs to get his dirty clothes off of the floor. And my dad says my mom needs to stay out of Hobby Lobby. So I'm sure that there will come a day. But, you know, as I think about this and I think about what, what kids soak in and the information that kids hear, they're very auditorily gifted. And so they hear everything, right? Even when you think they're not listening, I can promise you they're listening. And and they hear it and they repeat it and they soak it in. But you know, as I think about this, I think what if the information that they soak in, and not just our children, but all of us, I think we as a whole church can learn from this. What if the information we soak in was love? What if we had conversations about God's love and the vastness of God's love? See, I pray that in a perfect world, my daughter will grow up knowing that she is loved but also knowing that, that you know, mom and dad have showed that to her. You know, I pray that we may be an example. And also today is about the church. I pray that you all may be an example in my daughter's life. Um, and so this message is a little personal, but as I thought about it, I thought, you know, that's my desire. And, and you know, that's my, that's my goal in life is to let your children know, as well as my children know, that they are loved and that God's love is the most important love and we can share that love in and through us and, and the information that we speak and, and, and our actions and how we respond to things. Because you know, what if the information that we all soaked up was to love the way that God loves? Yeah, that's a good point. And I like what you said there, actions. You know, God's desire for us to experience his love isn't by having it plastered on a billboard for people to drive by. God's desire for people to experience love or to see his love is not through our decorative crosses or our cross jewelry. Really, God's desire for us to experience his love was put on display through the life of Jesus Christ. And through the example of Jesus Christ, we are called to live a holy life, a life that is a reflection of him a life that honors him through how we choose to live. And our kids are hearing what we're saying. They're hearing what we're choosing to do. They hear when we talk about the church. They hear when we talk about people in the church. And so what we say ultimately is affecting how they view the church. If they want, if we want our children to grow up to be passionate Buckeye fans, which I do, because that's what's best for them, (laughs) which it is. I make sure that they go with me to games. I make sure that they hear my incredible celebration and joy, but also they hear my frustration and agony. My children experience that firsthand. And just as I have a passion for the Buckeyes, I know Nick does well. He's gonna be a great, great dad <laughs> in that way. Just as I have a passion for that, man, I want them to experience my even greater passion for Jesus Christ. I want them to hear me passionately praying, to see me kneeling down 
and asking the Lord to protect them in their day, to guide and direct their footsteps in their conversations. I want them to hear me dream for their future of what God has in store for them. I know you want that for your children, for your grandchildren. In the same way, we as adults have to do that for each other. It's one of the great benefits of being a part of a church that has all generations. This isn't just a church with a single age bracket. We are so blessed that we have people who are pouring in to each of us from all different ages, whether we're learning the truth from a child or we're learning the experience from someone older than us. God has ways for us to receive the hope and truth for our lives to help navigate the moments that we face through the people that we surround ourselves with. And in the same way, that's how God intended to bring hope to the world. He said, I'm going to establish my church. And so I don't want my children to hear me ever talk poorly about somebody in the church. I don't want them to be misconstrued in their thoughts and beliefs of what Jesus called the bride of Christ because of my poor slip of the tongue. It's powerful what they hear. It's powerful what we hear from each other. I was thinking of this past Sunday, we sent our missionaries to two different church services and we meet every single day and gather and have a devotion and one guy would choose to lead it and the rest of us would listen and learn from them and we would create some dialogue and have some discussion in every single day. And sure enough, as we'd had that for a couple days, we'd go to two separate services And there's two different churches at two different locations, two different pastors preaching from two different parts of the Bible. And both groups, the guys came back after hearing the sermon and said, man, that's exactly what we've been talking about in our group. Two different sermons, two different messages, but what you find is when you start listening to the Lord, you find the unity in his message. Do you know that? You find the continuity in what God is speaking and saying to each and every one of us. And there's value in hearing and learning from each other, but there's also value in hearing and learning when we gather together. And there's importance in that. And ultimately, what we're describing today is that our expressions of what we share is coming from a place of love. That's how Christ greeted people. And that's what you do so well, Pastor Brittany, when you greet our kids. You love on them. Your team and volunteers, they show love and happiness. And that's why the joy that they have is so prominent when it comes to seeing them leaving our services each and every week. And so maybe for some of you, your role in understanding the church is not just to hear a Sunday morning service or worship with us once a week or online. Maybe for some of you, it's connecting even further so that you understand what God's mission and call is to your life. Maybe for some of you, you say, Pastor John, I haven't heard from the Lord. I haven't heard him speak in my life. Maybe for some of you, you need to serve. You need to serve. Put yourself in a new place, a different place here within the church body that you'll find when you're serving alongside shoulder to shoulder with somebody, man, the Lord can really speak to you in new ways. And you'll get something out of that you never even anticipated. You thought you were there to help others and really it's helping you. Maybe for some of you, the experience that you need to have is one where you show up And just listen, just listen to children talk. Listen to our seniors share their stories. Listen to how God has been faithful in their lives and how he's continuing to be faithful still today. I was reminded of one of our great pastors um, many years ago when I was a young kid, uh, Pastor Don Bowman, put on display a lesson I'll never forget. I was probably uh, 10 to 12 years old and I was at a friend's house and sure enough, um, her, her father was passing away. Literally, hospice was inside the house 
as he was breathing his last few breaths. And we had stepped outside into the yard and I didn't know what to say. I, I was trying to think of words to say and how to encourage or help in that moment. So I'm mumbling along. And sure enough, as, as they call the family together and say, hey, his, his time is coming to his end, Pastor Don comes flying around the corner. He was speeding. I'll rat him out. He was speeding. He comes flying around, throws it in park, and Pastor Don hops out of his car, and we say, oh, hey, Pastor. And, and he has this focus that he, he, he waves at us, but he's focused on running in the house. And, and he doesn't say anything to us. He just makes his way in, and, and in the moment, he doesn't have his normal joy that we saw every single Sunday, smiling like he was on a mission. And he goes inside the house and he gets to the bedside of this man who's passing away. And I'll never forget, he didn't say a word. He listened. He listened to the sorrow of a wife gripping the hand of her husband in the last few moments of his life. He listened to the sadness and cries of the children losing their dad. He listened to the prayers of the small group that had surrounded the medical bed who was praying. I thought, you're the pastor, you're supposed to say something, and he didn't say a word. He just listened. But his presence was love. Maybe for us as a church, our greatest witness to each other is our withness. When we're together, when we're with one another, when we can be encouraging and say, hey, I wanna pray for you, I wanna love on you, but we can also just listen. Listen to what's going on. Listen that this is a safe place. Listen, not to hear the gossip to share on social media or make a quick phone call. You won't believe what's going on. But we listen to then provide support as a church and share our spiritual gifts of encouragement, of prayer, of healing, of prophecy. And when that is the picture that Christ had of a church being unified together in love. Pastor Brittany, will you join me up here? I wanna invite you guys to stand because one of the greatest privileges for us as pastors is when we get invited into your biggest moments in life. We get to listen to what's going on. When you reach out and say, hey, this is what's happening, I just need somebody to share this with, and we get to listen to you. And I'll apologize for all the pastors who just didn't have the right thing to say at that time. Maybe didn't have the right word to, to bring forth this revelation or truth, but maybe by their presence they embodied love. By the time that they were giving, they embodied the gifting of listening and withness of being together. But you invite us into your special moments, sometimes on this stage, whether it's a wedding a funeral, whether it's your children being dedicated or baptisms that happen up here, that we get to celebrate those moments with you is the greatest gift of being pastors. And as we went through this message, it started to construct in our mind that maybe some of you showed up today and you would say, I need to experience the love of the church today. I need to experience for myself the love of Christ through his body. I need some encouragement. I need some people to rally around me. I just need people to listen. I need somebody to pray for me. I need somebody to pray because I can't say the words. And I thought maybe there's some of you here today and there were last service. If that's you, raise your hand this morning. We wanna be the church today. There's some hands going up right there. Raise your hands this morning. We're not gonna do anything wild or crazy. We just wanna be the church and come and support you. And it's okay to have a moment where people come around and say, hey, I don't have to know every detail, but just know you're not alone. 
We believe you can't do life alone. Raise your hand this morning if that's you, if you'd like some people. We've got some hands over here, some hands over here. If you see somebody raising their hand, just circle around them this morning. Go to where they are at this morning. Now, I want to invite Pastor Brittany to pray for us this morning. Take us to the Lord, Pastor. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time that we just get to gather together in your presence. God, thank you for this church. I thank you for every single person in this building today. God, we know that whether we are eight or whether we are 98, you give us spiritual gifts. May we be receptive to that. May we just use them the way that you purposefully gave them to us to be used. God, we know that you have a plan and purpose for every single person here in this room. God, I pray that those with a spiritual gift of listening may do so. I pray with those with a spiritual gift of healing may do so, with teaching may do so, with prophesy may do so. God, I pray for every single man and woman in this room right now. I pray that they may feel your presence here right now. I pray for those who are lifting their hands this morning, who just need to be heard, who just need to feel you, God. God, may those with hands raised, may the people around them feel a fire to go towards them, to be used by you. God, we are the church. God, 1 Corinthians 11.1 1 says, may I imitate me as I be Jesus. God, I pray that we may be Jesus to everyone. God, I pray that the information that other people may soak up about Christianity, about the church, about you, is ultimately love. God, we know that we are nothing without love. Our gifts are nothing without love. So Father God, remind us to love the way that you love. God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. And everybody said, amen. 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 Well, thank you so much for listening to us today. And there may be some of you here today that say, hey, Pastor, I have not received the love of Jesus before in my life. If that's you, we wanna help you take that step. It's the most important decision you can ever make. And we wanna encourage you to do that. We would love to meet with you here in person down front. Maybe you're new here. This is your first, second, third time you've been coming. We wanna know you personally. We wanna invite you to Guest Central right in the lobby on the way out. Maybe you say, I don't know what my gifts are. I don't know what my spiritual gifts are. Well, let's unwrap them. Let's not hold on to them. Let's find out, right? Let's meet us at Guest Central. We'd love to help you get your next steps going forward and, and uh, encourage you on that way. Let's put our hands out for a blessing this morning. Are you ready? May you go in the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the gifts that he's given you be used to edify his body, to bless those around you, and to share his love. May you listen to the needs of the world and point them to Jesus. Go in the grace and peace of Jesus. We love you, church family. 